And the example that I have in mind involves precisely a lead expression. I would like to type the expression let f be lambda x dot x in the pair f of naught comma f of true. And there are no free variables in this expression, so I assume that we can type it in the empty environment, and the empty type environment I just mentioned by not having anything here to the left of the turnstile. So let's try to type that. And if, if we can type check that, then the rule that we must have used would be the let rule. So um, what would the premises of the let rule be? Well, we would need to, to type check the local expression. We would need to type check lambda x dot x, and it would give some, we would get some type s. And then we would take a type environment, which is empty, and then add an assumption that f has type close of the empty environment. This is the empty environment. Close it under S, and we would use that to type F of naught and F true, the pair. We get some type T, and that would be the type that would be carried over here. Now, how could we type lambda x dot x, and what would S be? Let's see. If we're typing this, we must have used the rule for abstraction. And one way we could type this would be to say that, let us add the assumption that x has type A, where A is a type variable, and then we can type x, and it has type a, and this also tells us what S is. S must have type A to A. And how do we then close this type A to A? We're supposed to do that here. Let's see. We close a type by putting a universal quantifier for every type variable that's not free in the type environment, the type environment E empty is empty, so this is fairly easy, this is just for all A, A to A, so that's the type that F should have when we type check the pair. Well, type checking a pair, how do we do that? Well, um, type checking a pair is um, done using the pair rule. So here is the pair rule. In the pair rule, we type check the first component of the pair under the assumption here, f of naught, and we type check the second component of the pair under the same assumption about f. We use the same time environment, in other words. So this is, we get here T1, and we get here type T2, and then this is T1 times T2. What is T1 and what is T2? You may ask, well, let's find out. Well, typing this, that uh, requires us to use the function application rule because f of naught is a function application. So we use app here, and um, how do we type naught? Naught is a constant, so we immediately get that in this type environment, naught has type int. This was in fact the constant rule, uh, and how about f? Well, this is interesting because now we need to use the protection rule, the specialization rule, because it says that if f has type for all a, a to a, then 
uh, we can conclude that f also has type int to int. Why is that? Well, because we have that int to int is uh, an instance of for all a, a to a. We find it by instantiating a with int throughout. So, ah, that's nice. So now we know that f has type int to int and naught has type int. So we now also know what t1 is. t1 has type int. Similarly, for the other case over here, we must have used the app rule again. And here we get that true in this type environment has type bool. This was the constant rule. Um, how about f? Well, again, we can use the specialization rule projection. Because if f has type for all a, a to a, then we can in particular conclude that f can have type bool to bool. And this was because we have that bool to bool is an instantiation of for all a, a to a. So uh, everything is more or less wonderful now because here we see that T2 is really bool because the application rule tells us that everything works fine. This is bool to bool, this is bool, so this is bool. And therefore we now know what T1 times T2 is. It's int times bool, and consequently, we get that the mysterious T type is, wait for it, int times bool. So everything worked out fine. And the place where polymorphism became crucial was... Here, well, there were two places. This was one, and this was the other one, because f had a general type, and we specialized it. f had a general type, and we specialized it. Where did we discover that f had polymorphic type? We discovered it uh, in the let rule. We found out because we gave this lambda x dot x a type a to a, a was never mentioned anywhere, so we could put a universal quantifier here. So F got a polymorphic type. So that's how it works with polymorphism. End of story.